Hey everybody, I'm Lance and thanks for tuning in. Today I'll be using polyfiber paper and I'm going to show you how I use that to create some interesting textural embellishments for my pore painting. Leslie Onstadt from Color Arts sent me this polyfiber paper and it has some pretty cool qualities to it. Uh, it has a polyfiber coating that causes it to react to heat whereas it shrinks and it retracts and it creates these really cool textural patterns. Now to get the paper to react and do the patterns that we're talking about, I'm using my iron with parchment paper and I have a pet pad down underneath that. And I did not double up my parchment paper, but I played around with the settings of how high my heat was on the iron. And you saw me shake my finger, do not use steam. Um, but as you can see there, it turned out pretty cool and I got a pretty cool texture out of that that would be interesting to use. Now, if you're interested in purchasing some of this for yourself, you can visit colorart.com and use my code LanceTravis622 because I am a color art affiliate and you'll get a 20% discount off your entire purchase and it really helps me and it helps my channel. Now for my piece, I chose to do a rainbow chameleon and I'll show you why I chose that in just a second and I'll talk about that. I am just, I've, I've figured out where I wanted it on the sketch of my chameleon and now I'm just using some PVA glue and I'm going to put that down on the back side and then I'm gonna place it on the pencil drawing of my chameleon and this is gonna be like the main body of my chameleon. Now I'm going to be using light molding paste by Goldens and you can order that from the link in my description box and I am an Amazon affiliate and that helps me and my channel out as well. And what I'm doing is using the light molding paste as you see there with my gloved finger to create some smoothness from the edge of my polyfiber paper to the body of my chameleon. So it's more of like a seamless transition from that hard edge of the cut paper to the body of the chameleon. And because of putting it on with my glove finger, it's creating a little bit of texture that will be good for that kind of reptilian skin. I'm using some primary elements pigments from Color Art, and I'm taking a, a second here to show you how I'm mixing these to paint with them. And I'm using some Joe Sonia varnish and just kind of coating the bottom of my small cup there. And then I'm putting a couple of generous little scoops of the Kiwi primary elements. And then I'm going to be adding, now you're gonna just mix that around and create a slurry. And I'm now adding the Vivid Polypore and I'm just gonna mix that around until I get the consistency that I want. and. As you can see there, I'm, I'm using a little bit more and you just kind of have to play with that. And I, I'm mixing in these small condiment cups because I don't need a whole lot of paint, but this is kind of how I would be mixing also if I were to mix these for a blue. As I said earlier, I chose to do a chameleon and the color that you see me putting on this chameleon as a base, this is a rainbow chameleon, but as the base, I chose to use some Vivid Intense Aztec Bronze and I think I might have used a little bit of Tuscan Gold as well, uh, but those are wonderful colors and I wanted this to be the dark of my chameleon and then I'm gonna kind of layer colors on top of that and bring out the brilliance and the you know, the very shimmery, vibrant colors of the primary elements in a little bit. But I also find when you're painting with metallics that you need to use some, and I'm using some um, regular acrylic paint that is non-metallic, and you have to kind of keep building up the layers that way, and then you have a really beautiful foundation for the primary elements, as you'll see 
later on. As you can see here, I'm starting to put some of that more opaque yellow paint through there. And I think I'm going to use some of my hippie crafter paints. And the background that you see, I chose to do this because I'm really excited about this fiber paper and I love it from Color Art and the beautiful primary elements that are used in this piece. But the background is also going to be another video coming up where I used Hippie Crafter paints. They sent me some paints to try out. But I did it with a chameleon flower dip. So and I used WD-40 in that. So it's a WD-40 chameleon flower dip. And so keep your eyes peeled for that video. It'll be out soon and it's an interesting one as well. I love the background, how vibrant it is, but it still has kind of like a hippie quality that's almost tie-dye like. So anyways, on to the chameleon. I chose a rainbow chameleon because of the beautiful vibrant rainbow colors in that flower dip. And I thought, well, it'll be interesting to see if we can make it pop. And what better way to make it pop by using the wonderful, beautiful, sparkly, vibrant primary elements to kind of make him stand out from the background. The pigments from Color Art that I used to create the Rainbow Chameleon are Isadora, which is from the Bling It line, which is that beautiful, vibrant yellow. And I used Pink Grapefruit, which is primary elements. And I used Kiwi primary elements. And I used Summer Breeze primary elements. Those are some beautiful colors. And like I said, I will have links in my description box where you can go to Color Art if you'd like to purchase some of the things you've seen here. And remember, my code is LanceTravis622. I would really love it if you would use my code, get your 20% discount, and help me and help my channel. Come run away. I really love that you can see that the chameleon is now starting to take shape and starting to have more volume and shading, but you can also see that wonderful texture that the polyfiber is creating and it really does create this cool enhancement with this 3D effect and gives you that feeling of reptilian skin. And I think there's so many applications for that fiber paper. It's really wonderful. It could be, you know, a abstract background texture, it could be flowers, you could use that in some kind of flower abstract painting. And as you see there, you can see how those primary elements already, we're not done yet, but already how vibrant and how it is helping that chameleon to stand out from that really vibrant background. I'm showing you how I use my silicone mat over the top of my chameleon here to draw out his eyeball. What's going to be his eyeball? I wanted some 3D texture and we're going to use the glue gun to get that effect. And also I'm going to use that for kind of like the fin part that goes over his head and even his mouth. And so I'm just showing you how I can trace where I want it and the perfect kind of shape that I want with my silicone mat. Let it dry and then we're going to paint it obviously with the beautiful Isadora Bling It line pigments there you can see it and I've also cut some leaf shapes and I'm using some of the primary elements there too to paint the leaves and we're just gonna put down some of the PVA glue and put that into place and we'll wait for that to dry and when we wait for it to dry we're gonna come back and we're gonna hit it with some highlights of maybe the Isadora and some lighter green from the Kiwi You'll notice too that I have painted my tree limb with a flat burnt sienna paint that is non-metallic. And we're gonna go over that with the glue gun to create some dimension and some texture that's like bark for our tree branch. And then I'm gonna hit that with some Aztec, some of the Vivid Intense Aztec Bronze and Tuscan Gold to give that tree branch some highlights. And then I'm going to go in with a darker Burnt Umber to give the tree limb some, some darker shades to create volume. And as you can see here, I'm showing you the vibrant shimmer that this has with all of those primary elements and the Isadora Bling It. It's just really super vibrant and now the Rainbow Chameleon stands out 
not only from the primary elements, but from the really interesting and unique texture that that polyfiber paper gives that chameleon, that reptilian texture. Now, if you like this video and found it interesting and informative, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell so you'll be notified when I upload new content, and leave me a comment because I'd really like to hear from you. And if this has inspired you to try some of these color art products for yourself, please use my code LanceTravis622 at Color Art and get a 20% discount. Help me help my channel and come visit me again real soon for some more fun pouring together.